thing that uh, has been in your weekly playlist. Um, let's pass it maybe to Bear first. Hey guys, uh, yeah, well, uh, I'm here after being a couple of weeks away, <laughs> just uh, want to get updated on, to, on what everyone is doing. And um, on, on my mind, I want to build a DAO now, <laughs> a diabetes related uh, DAO, um, and I'll keep working on that <laughs> during the next weeks or months. And I'll pass it to Septimus. Thank you. Yeah, uh, my intention is just to see the last set updates of the comps and yeah, see if I can support in anything. And uh, distraction, I'm using this time for workout. I didn't have any time the, during the day, so I'm using this time for working out a little bit. And uh, playlist, uh, not so much changes. I still love uh, Spanish rap. Uh, check out Ajax, everyone. Uh, I'll pass it to Juan. Thank you, Septi. Yeah, my intention is to sync with comms, um, support any way that I can. And my distraction is that um, there's this video game that I have been playing over a hundred hours and I made a mistake and I am like, oh no, <laughs> and, and I lost some progress, but, but it's just time that we can uh, spend again. And I will pass to Efra. Uh, yep. So my intention is to sync with you guys and just just get up to date with everything. Uh, I don't have any distractions uh, right now. And um, on my weekly playlist, I've been listening to a local band called Solo Fernandez. It's, it's really cool. Uh, I'll pass it to Manu. Thanks, Efra. Um... Uh... Yeah, well, for me, I want to share with everyone the progress I've had with the newsletter that uh, is going to go live later today. I um, That's the intention. Uh, the distraction is the same. It's uh, I'm a little bit preoccupied uh, polishing it and improving it. Just the last little detail before it goes out. Um, playlist, Deftones, as always. <laughs> um, and... Uh, yeah, I'll pass it to. Um, I think it's all of us, right, Chewy? Uh, yeah, I think that's all of us. Sorry for not sharing my screen previously. Uh, okay, so uh, on my side, um, uh, well, uh, the, the intentions is uh, I want to go over uh, some of uh, the stuff. Like, I'm actually very excited today because. Uh, uh like the the, the kind of like results that we are going to be presenting are much more like uh structure around um uh, this like gathering of information from different teams and what's going on in uh each of them uh so so yeah this is one of my intentions uh distractions um not a lot of distractions but just like my mind is in many places today so not physical distractions just uh mental and something that has been in my weekly playlist. Um, let's see. Let's check out like some of the recent stuff. Uh, some Deftones too, and some Gustavo Cerati. So yeah, <laughs> not falling uh, very far from that. Um, and uh, welcome, Nate. Um, actually, I wanted to pass it. Uh, I wanted to pass it uh, to to Nate uh, before we go over. But before I forget, uh, Gustavo. But the idea that you want to start this amazing, you should really try. I can't remember the name, but it's like the common stack process for like what the next comments going to be. Uh, so, so yeah, maybe you want to check that out because I, I, uh, I know that there's some stuff like going on around there. 
Uh, is there anybody here that has more information about the common stack process for picking the next comments? Yes. Wait, I, I, I saw that. Uh, yeah. I wasn't sure that 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 my idea would fit there, and I, I didn't ask anyone, you know. But but yeah, now that you mentioned it, I should totally look into that. <laughs> I did, did you have a link that'll cover everything that kind of applies, the projects that kind of apply, and what ones have the best chance of of getting the common prize? So. Uh, see if your project matches up with it. Cool. I can send you a link. Also, um, talking about playlists, yesterday I, I saw the Limbiskit um, concert that, that Chuy attended in Mexico. It was really, really, really good. Really good. I will paste it in incomes too. Yeah. And, and, uh, to a Limbiskit concert? No, I, I saw a Limp Bizkit concert that got uploaded to YouTube, and then Juanca shared that with me, and I was like, yeah, I was there. Like, uh, it was like two or three weekends ago, something like that. Um, it, it's, just like, it, it's just like hilarious. It's like uh, uh, the name of the tour is uh, Limp Bizkit Still Sucks 2022. Uh, <laughs> but they were so good. They were so good. Like, I really, I really love the, the show and just like the whole approach to it. Um, yeah, it was, it was amazing. Uh, sorry, Nate, uh, do you want to share some intentions distractions? <laughs> yeah, uh, so my intentions is just catch up on comms to, um, see if we can promote the Twitter spaces that is going to happen on Friday. We have a meeting later today about it and it's going to set, set a time. So, um, see about going Twitter planning type thing. Um, but outside of that, my distractions are so many, I can't even count, so I'm not going to go into them all. But uh, yeah, i just uh, excited to be here, so I'll pass it back to you, Drew. Okay, thanks, Nate. Um, let me finish with uh, attendees. Okay, perfect. Um, let's start with our agenda. Uh, the first agenda topic is uh, Telegram security. Miss Rose is up and running. Um, Miss Rose, and I'm, and I'm also going to be sharing this in the next call with the stewards, but uh, Miss Rose is basically a, a bot um, that is going to help us with um, three main things. Uh, the first one is going to be like a CAPTCHA process so that it can have like some human verification. Um, so that we can get, get like at least like some of the spammers uh, out. Um, but the second is that uh, they have like this ban lists for for like recurring phrases. So usually how they use this is like for like racial slurs or something like that. It, like you can you can have like your list of like zero tolerance uh, uh, like expressions or phrases. Um, so yeah, I was thinking that maybe not banning you know like Binance but maybe like banning Binance is so hot right now, like something like that, like, like the, you know, like the, 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 the catchphrases that uh, some of the scammers use. Uh, so uh, the thing with this is that um, if anybody would uh, like come across in the next days, like with one of these like messages and, and templates, like we actually need a sample this time. This is that part of the zombie apocalypse. Um, so, 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 so we need like a small sample of, you know, like some of the text that they are doing. Um, and since some of these are recurring, you know, like they, they arrive in waves to the Telegram group and then uh, they, they, they just like start sharing like these same uh, things. Um, uh, so, yeah, maybe like let's take a sample and use it to give uh, Miss Rose more uh, information. Uh, and at the same time, like it just helps you like maintaining like some some. Uh, clean stuff, you know, like every time like someone joins a group, uh, I kept that on actually because uh, I I would like come across like some of the, some like scammy names or like, you know, like Tyler 8,567,000, you know, like these like long numbers. Uh, so yeah, those who are usually like immediately banned. So it's it's now like a, it's it's a better reason now actually with Miss, with Miss Rose because we don't have to like ban anyone based on these kind of stuff. Um, she'll just take care of that for us. So yeah, um, this is just something that we've been trying to uh, improve, uh, and I'm really happy that uh, 
it's a very very like user friendly um uh, uh bot so so yeah let's see let's see how that keeps working uh in the next few weeks however please please um uh, keep your eyes open to see if you can find any samples or just like any unwanted results uh from from his rows right like i i, I don't want this like something that i'm afraid of is is uh you know, like having like some kind of like rules applied to something that is going to be interpreted as like non-inclusive. So, I mean, it's something that in the end is like in our control, but still like going through tests. So, so yeah, um, any, any feedback uh, for Ms. Rose is greatly appreciated. Uh, okay, does anybody have like some comments or feedbacks on Ms. Rose and just like Telegram community security? Thank you, Chui. Okay, thank you, and uh, let's let's move on. Okay, Mitch and I w w were on a boat. Like here it is. It's taking forever, but here we are. We on a boat. Um, so. <laughs> The whole point here is that, uh, other than uh, Mitch is starting to visit Mexico more frequently, uh, let's uh, uh, always, always have like this um, uh, effort, you know, to uh, uh, maybe like have some kind of like, not an archive, but some kind of like incentive so that every time that, that uh, some of us like meet in real life, uh, there can be something that, that we can share uh, about it. Like I feel that, uh, we have a, uh, uh, like some content around that, uh, but I feel it would be a very good idea to start fostering this. Maybe I'm stepping in a little bit on the ground of Communitas, um, but it's just like this week and it was like, okay, like we have another picture again, you know, and like, uh, as, as, as the community uh, keeps growing and as uh, even our own relationships like evolve, um, I feel that it is, it, it is something like really positive and that uh, is very uh, enjoyable. So. Uh, if there's any kind of like content that you could, that you want to share, um, always be up for you know like uh, uh, trying to share it if it's either in the comms group or something. Uh, but I'll but I'll mention this to communities to see if there can be like any kind of of you know like uh, praise for meeting in real life or something like this. And uh, I feel that it strength it strengthens uh, uh, our bonds a lot. Um, so yeah, let's try to you know like if anyone meets in real life. Um, I feel it's a really good uh, opportunity to say like, hey, like, let's not miss the opportunity for the picture so that we can both get praise or just something like that. But uh, I feel that there's a growing, growing importance in this uh, and also as the community matures more. So yeah, just something that I wanted to uh, throw out there. Uh, okay, I guess there's not a lot of feedback about being in a boat, but any is welcome before I... Uh, <laughs> Move on to the proposals check-in. Okay. That's... Whoa. Okay, great. Okay, let's see. So, uh, in our proposals check-in, the most recent uh, proposal that we have is uh, the comms team DAO for the marketing team. Um, we're going to be shilling uh, some marketing achievements in, uh, in a few. Uh, but yeah, if you're interested in uh, supporting us, remember that you can always take your, your TEC tokens. I'm currently supporting this, but I'm also supporting the uh, dog food uh, proposal, the dog footing model for the proposal inverter. So I guess we're in a very like similar place than um, when we were uh, trying to get gravity passed, since it was a very uh, like a, a bold like proposal around the amount and everything there were uh, like some special needs around conviction so uh, I feel that this mutual support is also like part of the whole thing but uh, yeah as soon as you see like some of these uh, 
priorities, let's call them. <laughs> not that marketing is not a priority, but, you know, like, uh, people have the freedom to, you know, like, uh, take different uh, proposals. So uh, once we go uh, over that, um, you're always welcome to support the marketing team. And the way we are dealing with this, like uh, organizational wise, is just the work that has basically saved the team's life. Uh, I don't know where the teams would be without the work, to be honest. Um, let's, let's see uh, uh, like how the marketing board is looking. Uh, and you can already like get an idea of how we're trying to organize and uh, m more more than anything, not losing track, you know, of of everything that we do. So, Casale, uh, for example, has been doing some front end uh, adjustments and improvements. Uh, so he has submitted these as bounties. Uh, the idea is that uh, uh, there is some uh, like evidence attached to it. Um, so, so yeah, as you can see, like, it's it's just the way we're trying to keep everything organized and, like, not lag behind with, you know, like, uh, keeping track of the uh, uh, of the payments and, and just uh, mostly compensations. So, yeah, this is our uh, currently active proposal. And the rest of the teams have been just going so, so good. Uh, I mean, specifically Twitter planning and, and uh, TE Academy team. Like, if you go into their D-Works, it's already, like, very, very well organized, and it's just something very enjoyable to see. We've been working really hard in this for months, so uh, yeah. If 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 somehow we are also like uh, you know like <laughs> like suffering from any kind of like like uh, like fake positivity or like any any of these like really amazing perspectives that Durgas always has, please always uh, if you see something wrong working in teams, uh, please approach us. Like we. Um, are really, really trying to, uh, you know, like improve these uh, these forms of, of collaboration around uh, comms. So, so yeah, that's uh, this is the proposals uh, check in. Are there any questions or feedback around uh, the current proposals? I, yes. I have a question uh, to regarding yes, so the, go ahead. the translations. You know, there's a gravity process ongoing. Uh, I was thinking that maybe you know not all of the calls are recorded on on the teams, uh, but I was I was thinking that maybe we could set like a sort of like a rule out of that if it exists already that anything that is mentioned on on those calls that should should end up like in the forums so that follow-up can be given right so that if somebody mentions something it does not end in the forums it, it's just basically as if you had not said anything you know so i don't know if like a rule like that could be set up just so that things don't slip away on the process yeah, thank you for sharing this, Gustavo. Um, I know that this is uh, one of many uh, approaches that we can have uh, to prevent, uh, not necessarily conflict, but just like misunderstanding. And, and in general, I feel that it contributes to uh, transparency, you know, so there is like not really like loss in the end. Um, since there were just like a bunch of calls and then what's it was like one after the other on mondays originally which was like the approach that we were testing back then um we didn't really want to like put the weight on and, and i think i talked to septi about this like we didn't want to put a lot of weight uh on on transparency you know like uh um grab a lot of resources from them um so the idea was that uh these team calls were uh, supposed to be like uh, uh, supposed to have agendas for each of the calls and this agenda is like the way we keep track of the progress and then this call on Tuesdays is supposed to you know like gather information from all of the teams and kind of like report uh, some of the progress in the current projects in, in, in each one of the teams but and I agree like this is the first time that there's like some kind of of, you know, like misunderstanding or like internal conflict within the team. So, um, I mean, sorry, everyone else, is, if, if we are like not being specific or skipping details, but since there is like an ongoing gravity process, uh, we don't really want to like, you know, like put out there like uh, uh, inaccurate information or anything. Um, but yeah, like the, the, this is a very like valid uh, like opinion, like what happens in these calls, like how can we uh, improve transparency and, and just... Uh, uh, monitoring, you know, like these, uh, these spaces. Uh, so, so yeah, I, uh, how, how do you feel about that, Septi, or, or maybe Barry that has also 
doing uh, uh, more contributions to, to transparency. Uh, do you think it is like absolutely necessary to start recording team calls? I know that we were trying to do that with Twitter for a while because we had a bunch of contributors. Um, but the truth is that teams keep growing and keep developing. So uh, uh, yeah, like maybe like let's pass it around. I would really love to uh, listen to some of your uh, your thoughts on this. Um, can, can I add something? Gustavo, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I, I think that, for example, in, in my experience of, of what was going on with that misunderstanding, like uh, during the calls, it was mentioned, but then I assumed that it was being followed up somewhere. Like, you know, but I, I, I never looked at the agendas or the forums, but I assumed that it was being taken care of. And in the end, it did not happen. So, so you know, I don't know, maybe, maybe some way that, that other team members or other people can just like, I don't know, maybe like I should have followed up, you know, some, somehow just to make sure that everything was okay. Um, but yeah, it, 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 I felt like, like it was being fixed or it was being talked about, but it was not, <laughs> you know, and, and in the end, it ended up like escalating a bit, you know. So. Yeah, I, I, I agree with this also. Uh, I mean, like some of... Um, my concerns like let's let's call them was like um i mean transparency can always be improved you know and and um uh, just the way we all contribute to it uh it also like depends on on a lot of like initiative and and i mean septi has like seen me go through this like so many times like back when i first um started stewarding uh communications um septi one day was like hey there's an audit coming um, but it was like the first time that, that I was going through a process like that. So I don't know, maybe at the same time, like there's like a side to like Latin culture to it that I was like immediately associating it with something bad. And, and, you know, it's not, it's like lack of accountability is not necessarily something bad. It's, so, it's, it's something that can always be improved. Um, but I had to kind of like change that perception, you know? So I feel that the teams kind of like went through something similar, but there was more, uh, let's say like the concern to improve these like different factors was different in the different teams. And one of my biggest concerns around uh, uh, translations uh, was like this kind of like lack of, of, of uh, follow up and just accountability and transparency. But at the same time, like I, I, I personally like wasn't that concerned you know because uh in the end translations team needs to deliver translations you know and of course these are like the different uh ways we would like to approach this uh but since it was like something very like bounty based you know like i i thought that in a way like d work let's say or like a content index where uh these like follow-up tools uh that we wanted more organizationally wise than like transparency wise uh and this is one of the things that went wrong. And, and I actually like feel that maybe that was one of my mistakes, you know, like in the, the, there were like maybe uh, different ways in which these uh, like agenda and, and monitoring things could like keep going on. Um, but yeah, like I, I feel that maybe I didn't like push like hard enough, uh, uh, you know, like uh, around, uh, around this, this specific uh, uh, team. Uh, and I mean, I, I don't discard that there are like some, like maybe leadership, like issues within that. So, so yeah, I, I feel that there are like many different mechanisms that we can use to improve this kind of stuff and like use them even like as, as prevention tools, you know, to like misunderstandings or follow-ups. Um, because that's, that's a cool thing about transparency, you know, like you can always like go back, uh, and check how things were, you know, and like try to use this not for generate or perpetuate more conflict, but to, um, yeah, just like have this, just have the, the most information possible to prevent the, the issue itself from happening. And yeah, just like any information that could help, uh, you know, like find up a find opportunity in the conflict itself. So I don't know. I don't know. It's like, uh, yeah, it's, uh, um, it's the first time that we go through something like this. So, um, 
I feel it's going to make us grow as a community. Uh, but at the same time, it's like, yeah, like right now, it's just like, um, yeah, it's, it's, uh, <laughs> I was just like telling Quanka that it, it's, it's always more fun, you know, to kind of like, uh, read maker drama and sushi drama and saying like, oh yeah, these DAOs have so much conflict. Like I wish they had like gravity or, you know, like different tools, but like, Sometimes being part of, of conflicts like this is it's uh uh it's not easy. It's not easy in, in different levels. So so yeah, thank you thank you for these ideas and suggestions because uh yeah, it's it, it's I, just I gonna that, strengthen the teams. For me it's like it's 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 been like really clear everything that that has been going on and everything that has happened and, and I think I was involved more as an observer in the process and I, I think like right now I feel that I should be more involved, you know, when those things happen. Like I was more like as an observer, like seeing what was going on, but now I feel that I like I should be more hands on on things, you know. Like, like don't don't leave things like don't assume that things are going to happen, you know. You just like uh, ask for people or just read more or whatever, you know. <laughs> but yeah, I totally understand how you feel. <laughs> yeah, I want to say that from Gravity we are supporting, and also that it's normal um, to have this kind of misunderstandings. And yeah, I will be also uh, approaching some of the people that was in that call, as we don't have the recording, to have like um, a mapping of the different perspectives. So yeah, maybe I will be uh, DMing some, some of the people that w w was in that call to um, gather more information. But um, what I think is um, that it's good that, that we recognize that um, there's a conflict and that we try to, to um, manage it and to do something around it uh, with the most, uh, with the best intentions and with the most transformative approach. Um, and with, with the non-rivalrous um, culture that we are trying to, to, to reproduce, I always say that sometimes, um, it's easier um, to 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 point uh, on someone on a conflict than to talk about the conflict as 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 a situation. So um, yeah, what uh, I am just trying to say is that um, we will be supporting, and that this is something that that hopefully can um, help us, as Chui said, improve, learn new things. Um, develop new processes and and also like taking care for the individual well-being of all the parts and uh, without um, yeah pointing on on anyone. I agree definitely. I think you're cutting off, Sepi. Okay. Do you hear me good now? Mm, good enough to understand, good enough, but not good enough to get a full sentence, this, I think. Not good. Is that good now? There's like no, a, that's there's like a lot of echo on, on the on the. What if you activate the noise suppression? And I don't know if that can help. Wait, maybe I can disconnect this. That was that last one was a little bit better. It, it, well, it, now it's good. Yes. Okay. Sorry for that. Uh, I, yeah, I just wanted to say like uh, Bear was there and he recorded a little bit. Maybe it's worth for gravity using that recording. Oh, I'm so exhausted. And then, uh, I mean, regarding recording all the all the calls for the teams, I feel it's overdue. Because like we're already updating everything you guys are doing there in this call and then also in the community call. And then we have also the work for accounting and then we also will have the, the audit where we will uh, yeah, go into the detail on all, all of the payments, which is like the most important thing to be transparent about. And I mean, I, I think like just having a conflict in a call doesn't mean like, you know, I, I'm probably people would ask like for those recordings to be removed. and we should do like as people say because someone you know when someone privacy is in there and they ask it's oh wow i'm so exhausted 
Um, yeah, uh, I don't know what else I wanted to say, but I, I feel like, you know, for accountability, uh, you know, comms is pretty covered with uh, two updates uh, every week, uh, community call and this call, and then we can, you know, we have the work and we will have the, the audit and also the agenda. So I feel like, you know, and also those calls sometimes, like I was recording Twitter at, at the beginning and there was, since those calls normally turn into a work session, I don't went to many of those, but Twitter especially, and there is like a lot of empty space that I feel like it's, yeah, like I feel like having the data in from here is more than enough. But I mean, if everyone thinks like they should be recorded, uh, we could work on that and uh, fill up a, a method. Okay, uh, I'll, I'll make sure to bring this up in like uh, each like individual team call. Um, I would just like to, uh, you know, like not particularly based off this conflict, but just in general, you know, like how, how, how would people feel? Um, do they think that it would be like something that uh, contributes to make some improvements or would it be like a burden? You know, uh, um, I agree with you, Septi, like some of these sessions are very, like I like the warmth of it, like for example, Twitter planning. Um, actually, that, that's like one of the updates and, and highlights that I wanted to say that I feel that is working really, really good and very like, stable and, and approach friendly, you know, like if anybody would like to join in and start drafting some tweets, uh, like even now, like we can, you know, like compensate if they put an hour of their time and draft like two to three tweets. Um, it's just fun to like start opening up and, and being more open to contributors. Um, uh, and, and as you say, like there's a lot of like work session, but at the same time, I feel that, um, being a situation where there's like new contributors and, and, and I don't know, I mean, it's just, it's just like, I don't want to have like this like prejudice of, of, of like these kind of like situations being like uh, volatile in, 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 in some way. Um, but yeah, I feel that a, a temperature check could help a lot. Just like knowing how people are feeling and, and if they think that this is going to like add something and contribute and bring something valid to the table that is going to help us improve. Or if it's just going to be like, oh, yeah, like this happened. So now it's just like, you know, it's like workplaces where they, I feel it's similar to workplaces where they put like security cameras because someone like took some cash from the cashier or, or something like this. And, and, you know, it's like, like, oh, yeah, now I come to the job and I have like this camera on top of me like all of the day. Sometimes the boss calls because he saw something, you know, it's just, oh, that it, it's just like surveillance culture. I, I. I wouldn't like like to be more associated with that. So I feel that the huge part of that is that the community and contributors themselves are aware of 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 how this helps us. You know, of how this like improves things. Not it's not really like if if anybody feels uh, like uh, with like surveyed on. Like I feel it just like defeats the whole purpose, right? So. So yeah, I'll, I'll make sure to bring up this temperature check and feel like in general, just ask ourselves the question of how can we improve transparency and, and accountability in, in, in the teams, um, especially yeah. now that the ball is rolling. Yeah, I, I agree with you, Chuy. And, and yeah, I've been involved in the Twitter planning sessions also. So I've, I've actually written some tweets there and it's all been like really easy and, and fun to do. And, and, and yeah, I think, I think that uh, there, there could be a lot to learn between the other teams. Uh, things that could be applied and yeah not necessarily like recording everything but yeah more more accountability on like the, the team leadership maybe that that could help like the process be smoother and don't feel it, that it doesn't feel like it's stuck or it doesn't feel that people that are involved don't know what's going on you know i think that yeah i think that again like the the other teams could uh, help a lot of uh, this learning process and this development process yeah yeah, thanks, Gustavo. Thanks, uh, thanks for this. Uh, does anybody else have like any comments or, or feedback uh, around this?
I want to share like recording is cool. Like, you know, you see a conflict, you can record it, but it's just very important. Like we are aware, like uh, not to publish something like someone doesn't want it to be public because that could, uh, you know, hurt uh, the branding. But I mean, I think like, you know, getting like all those details and following the processes, I think like, for example, like this recording could be good for gravity in some cases, maybe not, but it could potentially be good. So the, the problem is not the resource, but how we use it. So I, I think like it, there's nothing wrong with recording it. Uh, but yeah, be, be care like I think we should be careful how we use it. Yeah. Yeah, thanks. And I, I am really amazed um, about how everyone is, is um, being proactive on, on this. And yeah, it's, it's normal. And um, I, on the recording, I think it's, it's good to record. Um, but also, as, as, as Septi said, it's also very important uh, to have like discretion. Like if, if, uh, if this is something that would be um, helpful, for for the reconstruction of the situation yeah it can be something helpful for gravity but if it's not something that would benefit the community it shouldn't go public because every time that we are here we are also representing the community and um everything we do uh, um the way we talk and and um it's important to 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 always try to um keep the image of the community um, on top and uh, the conflicts that we have is just the things that we need to solve and th and like the dirty laundry that uh, you wash in your house and there's a process for that so and and we are we are doing it um, so yeah I think it's it's just normal and we just need to um, give some time for the situation to be more clarified for all the people who participated to express their point of view and and then to think collectively what would be the best transformational actions um both for a short term and a long term yes i i uh i agree and and, and thank you bear uh for uh recording that that makes me think of <laughs> two things where hot mics went wrong um i don't know if any of you have seen like the christian bell rant uh, same thing, like he was on set and they were like rehearsing a shot or something like this and then the DP was like moving lights around and he became all mad because it's like you're distracting me and I'm like into character, you know, like actors, yeah, low self-esteem and stuff like that, you know. Um, but then the sound guy was like recording everything and he leaked that uh, to the media and it ended up like on the internet and it was like, oh my god, Christian Bale is crazy, so... That was like an internal conflict within a set that scaled to, you know, just like TMC stuff and just like that. And it's just like, yeah, like not, not something, it's just like there was a whole opportunity there for like both human beings and then it like got all spoiled because it leaked. Um, and, it, and, and I also like, I don't know if any of you have seen like a documentary called The Jinx. It's on HBO. Uh, it's super interesting because like, they were like interviewing this uh, guy that was like accused of of uh, uh, killing his ex wife or something like that, and they like catch him like right before they were like starting to to roll the shot. Uh, he was like re rehearsing the line, "I did not perpetually kill her. I did not perpetually kill." Her. And then and then his lawyer like approaches him and he's like, "Dude, you have a hot mic on. Like everything you said is being recorded." Oh yes, yes, yes. I'm just like you know. I have troubles with the word like perpetually or, or something like that, uh, purposely, something like that. Uh, and it was interesting because that like those interviews and those outtakes ended up being uh, evidence for the trial. In uh, the whole documentary itself, like the whole published documentary on HBO was like part of the evidence during the trial. So it's always delicate, right? Like this, this got me thinking, I mean, 
nothing serious like that happened <laughs> in, in, in this call. I mean, we're not like discussing murders or anything, of course. Not. But you know, it's, it's just like, um, there's a very like fine line with, with uh, uh, like responsibility and, and just like decision making around these processes and, and how, uh, how this can like all go in a way in which like it can be like for the benefit of the community and not really like turn into some kind of like uh, situation where everyone is like sharing their point of view, you know, and it's like, no, I think it's great because that, no, I think it's bad because of this, like that contaminates a lot uh, the process of, of conflict management. So, so yeah, sorry for like <laughs> rambling on that thought. Um, it's just, uh, thank you. Thank you very much Bear, for, for, uh, for doing this. Um, I feel that it, it was like a great opportunity just like saying, okay, th like there's this situation unfolding. So probably this can have like this purpose in the future. Um, so yeah, and, and, and it's, it's very, it's very good that, that we have this so that we can like go back and, you know, like really like take the most out of this opportunity to improve. So uh, thank you very much for that, and uh, and yeah, I'll, at the same time, like thank you for for sharing like this whole thing about like oh this conflict like popped up in this in this call, so this call doesn't go up. Um, yeah, like at some point I remember like I, I yeah like, I, I was on a call or something, and then like something weird like happened in the background, and I remember I DM Septi, it's like hey Septi, like can you go in the video and maybe. You know, like maybe like blur my my uh, my webcam or something momentarily because uh, I feel like that, that, that like it's just like something weird to have like up on YouTube and something like that, right? I mean, it was like a situation out of my control behind me, but you know, sometimes these things uh, can happen. So so yeah, always uh, remember that uh, most calls are recorded. So <laughs> so yeah, if there's something yeah. weird or that wouldn't make you like comfortable, um, it's it's something a hundred percent valid as well. I even remember a legal call, like someone was talking about uh, tornado cash, you know, and then like, oh, this is being recorded. Please, can you delete? And uh, of course, like if you're asking, like, of course, like pre people's privacy is important. Agreed, agreed. Thank you. Thanks so much, everyone, for, um, yeah, it's just like, making me feel like comfortable with with all of this like I, I i i feel good that i like shared some of this uh here so uh yeah thanks everyone um okay let's let's move on to the next topic which is the twitter spaces for uh next friday um nate could you like give us like some some details so that i can take a a, a note on this well my first note is like oh. those like pending tests that we have so yeah, yeah so um, sorry <laughs> sorry by the way like yeah just to clarify, I think it's it's going to be this Friday, but I can double check on that. Um, but as far as the tests are concerned, yeah, I, we we just want to get some um, tweets out about prepping, like just kind of advertising it and then pushing it forward. Uh, we were going to finalize the time and date today in our meeting, and so um, yeah, we just wanted to get. Get it out there before voting got too crazy since it's already up on the uh, proposal in the gardens. Um, but yeah, outside of that, it's just going to be an hour long roundtable with uh, members uh, from different DAOs that are participating in the DAO proposal inverter. And we're just going to go over the ins and outs of what the DAO proposal, in, the proposal inverter is, you know, who are the agents involved and, and what, what kind of purpose it serves and for DAO to DAO tooling. But uh, is that is that? I know that it might be. Now that I say it out loud, that it might be a really really short notice to do some of these things. But um, yeah, how are you feeling about yeah, it? Is there any objections to it? I think we can make it. I feel it would be really good. Um, maybe. Uh, um, do you have any kind of means, Septi, to uh, be able to? Uh, record this or or is that is that already like covered in any way nate or are you like starting from uh from scratch with uh yeah like the whole thought about recording it yeah the recording thing i'm not sure of uh in terms we you know i i have the format for the for the round table and the people participating but outside of that it's really kind of up in the air so i it would be nice to have a recording of it um 
but perhaps since this is our first one, this is this is something that I, I foresee becoming a um, a recurring thing that we do here in the TEC is the TEC roundtable where we highlight different uh, TE projects and advancements and something that I would like to see other people step up and if you if you would like to facilitate one like an like an episode of a TEC roundtable for a particular thing that you like. I would like to see kind of a rotating committee of TEC members facilitating different conversations around the TEC base. So um, if you're interested in something like that, like message me and trying to set up the infrastructure for it. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Um, thank you very much. Um, are you going to be available today after... I think yeah, it's so, so like I think one PM PST. Um yeah, I can do the one PM. I've got a hack session at two and then I'm meeting with Prime uh the, the Prime and all of them for at three o'clock okay. to get the details on it. But I would like to test out the Twitter spaces for sure. Okay. I kind of like uh, ran some tests um over the weekend, but I feel it would be a matter of also defining like this format thing we were discussing, right? Like, should the TEC host the Twitter space and then everyone from their own personal accounts join it and then have like co-hosts or have like the facilitator of the call um, run Post the it. TEC account? Yeah, yeah, like like what? Uh, I, yeah, yeah. I honestly, I think you know, because I, I I'm not sure how many people have access to the TEC Twitter account, but it would be really nice just to have somebody there who can be like, okay, we're running a TC Twitter space today and I'm going to set it up and press record basically. Um, if that's possible, but I'm not sure if it is, or we'd have people actually, willing to do that. There is, there is a document that says everyone who have access. And actually Nate, I think if uh, that call could be recorded, I think that'd be awesome. And uh, if you need like someone to record, probably me or where can join there and get the recording. I think it's, it's cool. Like, you know, if if the first one is good, like we post it, and if it's bad, then like we just delete it. There's nothing wrong to get the recording. Okay. I think, yeah. I think Twitter Spaces get automatically recorded, uh, uh, and posted to Twitter after the the transmission. Or I don't know if you're talking about posting it on on YouTube or something like that. Yeah, maybe. Uh, I mean, what what I was talking about is maybe like re-uploading it to YouTube, like have it be like its own event but of course like if 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 everything turns out good and and i mean there's nothing wrong we can just like leave the the twitter space recording up in our twitter i don't know if i don't really know like how it works yet like do people point to pre-recorded like twitter spaces because uh, i've seen like some recaps on youtube and stuff like that but but i don't know like how flexible it is you know like i know it's pretty good for live events but like pre-recorded content on Twitter, I don't know if it's like the just I'm a platform sure where how. we could get the most out of it, you know? But I've definitely listened to Twitter spaces after the fact, and I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but it's, it's basically, this was Twitter spaces, this was live like three hours ago, and I'm listening to it li like right now. Um, and I'm not sure exactly how they do it, but... Uh, I think it. I think it's probably quite manageable, and they've they've added a bunch of features to this. Although I have not tried it out personally, so look, let's plan on doing that at like one. Yeah, if if you're down with that. Yeah, you can actually record uh, the Twitter Spaces, but the problem is it's only available for thirty days. I I think after thirty days, the the, the recording disappears on Twitter. Gotcha. Okay. That makes sense. Yeah, thank you so much for that, Efra. Uh, yeah, probably recording it would be the, the, the best idea. So yeah, I, I, yeah, I think I can figure it out. Uh, uh, let's see how the test goes, uh, Nate, and, and maybe we can, yeah, we can put something together or I just can ask like one of the One Hype TV contributors, like they have a lot of experience, like recording like but like extracting just the the straight audio instead of compressing it uh so so i i feel that could be also like uh interesting uh to try uh, i'll reach out to them and see if uh if they would be down to uh help us uh, with their recording 
That would be great. Okay. Okay, so uh, moving on, uh, trying to cover the next uh, seven minutes. Uh, bringing back meme parties. Um, I know that, it, I mean, it's on a Friday, and I know that it's nighttime in, in Europe and in, uh, in the Americas. It's just like, like right of, like after the, the, you know, like after noon. And, and um, yeah, it could, it, yeah, m maybe, maybe we could have like a proposal. But at the same time, like the times that I've attended meme parties, uh, it's always good that it's like the last thing of the week. Uh, so, just uh, uh, like thinking, thinking now of of like bringing them back and and you know like incentivizing people to attend more often to them. Um, how like how does everyone feel like about the meme parties on 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 Friday? Um, and also uh, another thing that I'm going to start promoting with the individual teams is is this like hey like show up like let's make some memes uh, and yeah see how that uh, can keep working in the future. But yeah, like, what, what's the general uh, sense of this? Like, does anybody have like any particular uh, like opinion or, or criticism against uh, the current spot for the meme parties? Okay, so I'll take that as we're good with Fridays uh, still. So um, yeah, let's uh, let, let's try to make an effort uh, to uh, to be there. Uh, I also feel that anyone is going to bring like very unique perspective and topics uh, to cover different uh, uh, meme uh, like uh, themes. Uh, so yeah, let's let's bring meme parties back. Like I feel that we're we are uh, at a point where these can like start benefiting uh, benefiting benefiting a, a lot the community and. Um, yeah, just to think like about how much memes help during the hatch and during the comments upgrade and during the uh, 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 the uh, parameter parties. You know, like all of uh, all of this, I feel that it was very interesting. So let's try to bring it to our current status and see how how those work. Um, I agree. I was involved in a couple of those, and and they were fun to be at, and uh, also just talking about just different things. Yeah, they're, was, they're they fun, were... and sometimes it's like. Yeah. Uh, oh, sorry, sorry, Gustavo, you, you cut off. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah, they, they were fun, like, to listen to people just, like, be off topic, you know, like, just not talking about, about, um, about things related, uh, to, to the TC necessarily. And that was fun also, like, you know, just interact with people more, like, on a personal level. That's, that's fun. There were also other events that were, like, also, like, that. I don't remember the name, uh, but I also noticed that, no one, no one, uh, or no people started attending to those, so they seem like to be dead. <laughs> I'm not sure about it. Yeah, it's. Uh, I also think that the TEC lounge. I mean, meme parties sometimes like touch on on like TEC matters, uh, but the TEC lounge. I uh, I believe that's just like a strict rule. It's like we cannot mention anything about work. So. Uh, yeah, there, there are there are many um, areas that work like that, uh, and and it's mostly like around communitas. So so yeah, I feel that also meme parties could be another extension of communitas. I need to start jumping on more communitas calls because uh, right now with the growth of the community, there are a bunch of opportunities. So uh, speaking about opportunities uh, for new contributors, we're looking for. Um, just people that are looking in, uh, for ways to contribute to, uh, to the TEC. Uh, we would like to start um, like doing some tests or, or analyzing like some proposals on, on Mirror XYC as an international uh, platform for uh, articles. Uh, and, and some uh, token listings follow up as well. Like this has been an hour queue for like two sprints or, or three. Um, and we just haven't been able to actually like jump into like hands on with these uh, matters. So if you have any kind of experience or you're in a contributor and are looking for uh, for new ways to do this, uh, yeah, hit us up and, and uh, we'll also be mentioning this in the community call to see if uh, if anybody's interested in contributing to to comes and we can have maybe like some new people in uh, in this call. And I'm going to quickly go over some of the team updates for the last two minutes. Um, so the T Academy right now we're working in um, trying to come up with like different frameworks for um, outreaching with educational events. We have a bunch of stuff happening. Um, we have the Graviton training, which is going to be like by the end of the month. We have the T Fundamentals course. Uh, we have the Discord bot army. 
So there's a lot of opportunities to learn things at the TEC when you think about it. Uh, and we're going to start doing like specific outreaching. So, uh, Nate, maybe that, that you could keep that on your radar. If there are any like other community spotlights from other communities, um, we're trying to get a bunch of those. And uh, Anatech is going to have like this like quick five to ten minute pitches about, uh, uh, you know, it's like, oh, do you, are you into education? Like you want to know more about token engineering or about uh, conflict management? You can always like come to the TEC. Here are like our next programs. Like everything is free. You know, I, I feel like we're at a very, very right uh, moment to start uh, doing some community spotlights and, and uh, promote this educational event. So, um, if anybody here is close to other communities, um, I mean, I'm, I'm going to reach out to the usual suspects, uh, the, the the ones that helped us with param parties and stuff like that. But if there are other communities that you think could uh, we could benefit from, uh, yeah. Just uh, uh, hit them up and, and uh, let me know so that we can uh, make it happen. I was going to add, I think uh, that's a really good idea because, and, and really it's just about everybody in this room. We're all part of this kind of industry and we're all looking in different areas all the time. And so if you see something that's really interesting or fascinating or pushing the envelope within TE, like, let's talk about it. <laughs> like, uh, get people involved and really engage with it. Yeah, Perem's parties like really, I I I, I feel that that uh, Perem's parties kind of like were, were close uh, to that because uh, they grew a lot of interest and at the same time like people were excited about what was going on in TEC, but they didn't have like a lot of awareness about like how. But what is it? You know, it's like uh, we were like one of those uh, uh, like DAOs, and then the Perem's party started happening. It's like okay, so. They, they could just like point a finger to okay this is token engineering this is like a tool that we can use um so yeah i feel that there's like a similar opportunity right now but offering a lot of education uh, okay uh we're at the top of the hour sorry uh yeah I, I, damn it I, I i forgot about this manu like we were we wanted to send the newsletter like uh, by the end of the call so uh, I'll follow up with that. Uh, uh, I'll follow up with that later with you, so that we can send it today. And thanks everyone for being here. Um, and thanks for all of your feedback. Thank you, Chewy. Thanks, Chewy. Thank you. Bye, everybody.